was recently asked to do a picking guide for the uh, ERA Vectis uh, centre case or gearbox, if you like, for UPVC doors. Um, but before I go down uh, that wormhole, I thought it might be a good idea just to go over the ERA uh, centre case um, and talk about uh, the way that it works and the different options you have for configuring it, but also um, how it can fail because this uh, Vectis doesn't have a very good reputation. Um, but it's not just, the way that this fails is not just isolated to this particular center case. So, let's just move that out of the way. Um, underneath I've got a, a standard Euro cylinder, um, Euro profile uh, center case. And uh, this particular center case can be configured in any one of a number of ways. Um, it can be configured as what's known as a lift lever or a split spindle. Um, and if we take a standard spindle and sleeve it through the center there, when that is turned, um, it is then going to uh, operate the, uh, in fact, let's take that out. Let's put this tool in so I can turn it uh, and simulate it properly. So, um, as you know, when the handle's lifted up, the uh, multi-point lock mechanism is activated in the door, which is normally obviously bolted onto the front of this, the faceplate. Uh, and if you look, you can see these two components here in the, in the center case obviously move in and out, um, and they are uh, deploying the hooks or rollers or um, dead bolts in the uh, in the multi-point lock depending on how it's configured um, what you'll notice is uh, when I turn this they're deployed in one direction if I turn it in the other direction you can see that the actual latch on the door is opened allowing you obviously access to the property so it's locked and the dead bolts out on this case they also do a, uh, a hook version as well and then when you unlock it and push the handle down, the latch obviously allows the uh, the person to get into the house. Now that this is just like, um, I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs here, but the other configuration that you can have with this is what's called a split spindle. And this particular spindle compared to the solid version actually rotates about the middle. So each half of it can rotate separately. And when that's positioned inside the uh inside this center case um one half of it will operate uh one side of the lock and the other half will operate the other side of the lock um, and what does that mean what does that allow you to do um what it means is that with just one handle you don't need to have a separate paddle um, as you would have on a um a dual follower on a on a, a center case on this one we can operate just one half and that one half will retract the latch and it will deploy the entire multi-point lock mechanism but the other half and effectively this would be the exterior side deploys the multi-point lock uh, multi-point mechanism but you can see that it does not operate the latch so this means that when the door is closed um, and the person's left the property, they're not actually going to be able to get in using the handle. What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to insert a key into the uh, center case. And as you can see, uh, this is simulating the cam on the Euro cylinder. So effectively, the end here is like the key. And you can see the key is allowing us to, uh, to operate the latch. So it's like an, an additional um, security feature where when the door's closed but not locked, um, you still need the key to be able to get in from the outside, but you can still operate the latch from the inside. And that's what that split follow is all about. So let's have a look inside this centre case. I've taken most of the screws out. So I've just left two in here. Um, what have we got inside here and how does, how does it to allow this to work in a, um, a, a lift lever or a split spindle kind of way. 
So if we take that uh, cap off, what you can see inside, this um, gold coloured part here is called the strap and it's the entire strap that moves up and down um, that operates the multi-point uh, mechanism inside your door. So the bottom half of it would be sleeved over here and the top half would be sleeved over there. This mechanism here is solely for reversing the direction of this, uh, of this uh, top part here. So as that moves down, that needs to move up so that they operate the mechanism. So this is effectively just a reversal mechanism. Now, if I uh, push down on this, uh, you can you will see as that goes moves down this is obviously moving up this is moving down what you'll also notice is that there's a uh, an elongated cutout here that's that's driving the uh, the bolt into the door frame into the keep on the door frame um, and then when that is fully deployed the door can then uh, be, this can be then secured in that, uh, in that deployed position by operating the lock. So what happens there? Let me just take this strap off. I'll explain what that's for in a second. This part here is uh, operated by the cam on the Euro cylinder. So when the um, lock, uh, when the uh, mechanism is unlocked, so let's just move it to the unlock position. You can see this is not allowed to move because there's a, a part of, uh, there's a piece of metal there on the strap that's preventing that from moving across. So if you ever try and lock a multi-point uh, mechanism when it's not being deployed, you'll notice that, that uh, you can't lock it. And that's the reason that's blocking it. If we then push this all the way down into the locked position, and uh, let's get it all the way down. There we go. When that's all the way down in the locked position, what you will now notice is that this mechanism here can slide across. And when it has uh, slid across, you can see that this piece of metal here that was blocking it from being locked just now, is now actually blocking the entire mechanism, the strap from moving upwards. So in other words, you can't unlock the door. So, so this is the, part of the lock that operate is operated with the cam on the Euro cylinder. Typically it pushes that up. There we go, it's all in pieces now. But typically it pushes that up, it slides across and then it drops back down again. And you'll notice here in the cap, there's like a, a, a little sort of cut out there with this um, piece in the middle that, that it jumps over when it's in unlocked and then it's in the locked position. So, I took this off just now. What does this do? Well, this is the part that uh, allows when the um, uh, when the mechanism is unlocked. So let's just push this into the into the unlocked position. There we go. Let's just pop that back in where it belongs. Um, so when the uh, door is in the unlocked position, if you were to then carry on turning the key in the lock, the cam pushes this part across and unlocks it. It spins all the way around and then it pushes up on that part there. Uh, that's hinged through a little pin here inside the hole in the case. And what that does then is it, is it operates this uh, latch mechanism here. Now, the clever part is, on the latch itself, there's a little bar that can be rotated to change the handing on the, on, the, uh, on the latch. I'm not talking about the part that goes into the door, I'm talking about the part that operates on the split spindle. So um, you can have the, um, uh, the exterior side of the door on the left or the right, uh, and you would change, you, you unscrew this, uh, the, the actual latch itself, and then you can rotate this little bar that I'm pointing out now to change the handing on the uh, on when you're using it in split spindle mode. Uh, very clever stuff. So, right, 
Um, what do we need to understand about this? The methods of failure in this, um, the most common failure is this part here. And in fact, there's two uh, discrete toothed parts there. Um, and those vertical tooth parts, uh, toothed parts keep the followers uh, in their central position. So when you, uh, when you push the handle down, it effectively compresses the spring in whatever direction this is moving in. And then when you let go of the handle, it's the springs behind this that, that uh, return the, um, the follower back to its uh, central position. Um, so that you could almost effectively call this as uh, two spring cassettes inside there that work in both directions. So work whether the handle's pushed down or whether the handle's lifted up. So, um, what, what can happen is uh, these break and the little bits of metal that, that uh, follow inside these slots um, will fall off, uh, typically with a little bit of uh, tooth left on them. And they drop down inside the lock and then they prevent the bolt from being retracted or they prevent the, um, the cam from being operated by the, uh, um, by the lock itself, by the Euro cylinder. Uh, and of course, when that happens, as I'm sure you're aware, it's, uh, it's then a case of um, manipulating and doing the best you can to, uh, to operate the uh, mechanism to, to pull the bolt in and to obviously um, pull the, uh, the hooks or the bolts or, or, the, or the rollers in the actual multipoint uh, lock itself to, uh, to get the door open. So that's effectively all of the tech that's inside the, uh, inside the center case, or at least not inside this one. And this is the most common point of failure here. Right, I've just uh, put this back together again. And uh, I thought I would um, just add that uh, it's a great idea to take one of these apart yourself uh, and do the best you can to uh, put it back together again so that it's uh, in full working order. Because there are times, uh, for example, I've had times when I've been on a door, um, I've had a 35 mil back set with this uh, part here broken on the back. Um, I've gone to my um, uh, center case uh, box and realized I don't have any more 35 mil back sets, but I've got a 45 mil back set. So what I've actually done in the past is, uh, is done a center case transplant. So taken this completely apart, um, swapped parts over, so that you've got a working uh, a working center case, uh, and then pop that back in the door before you go and order the, a brand new one to with a warranty, of course. Um, but it's it can dig you out of a hole if you know how these work by uh, taking them apart and uh, putting them back together, um, and uh, investing that time in improving your knowledge. So if you get stuck on a door, uh, you have uh, lots of different options. Just another thing to add, when you go to uh, a door that um, is not locking properly, uh, if you lift the handle uh, when the uh, door is open and you can lock it, but then when you close it, you can't. Uh, the reason you can't lock normally is because when these parts, uh, when the strap is operated by the handle, uh, if it's not if the uh, bolt, for example, or other parts of the uh, locking mechanism are not fully deployed, if you look down here, you can see this part here obstructs the locking mechanism, so you can't lock it. So everything needs to be fully deployed all the way before you can then um, lock the door with the uh, with the key. So the reason you're not able to lock is because the uh, mechanism is not fully deployed and the door will obviously need some sort of adjustment. And here we can see, I've put a Euro cylinder in. You can see the cam here. It's a thumb turn, so I can operate it from the back. When the key is put in and you turn, you can see the first thing the cam does is it lifts up that central portion, which then allows the cam to engage with what is effectively a talon 
and slide that part across and then it drops it back down and that is now as you can see in the locked position and preventing the strap from moving and then to unlock the door is the reverse you can see the cam first of all lifts this part up and then grabs hold of, of that and pushes it across and drops it down again and now the door is effectively unlocked because the strap can now move.